on your tables, you will find something which we are going to read together soon. I'm just going to read the first little paragraph on the scroll that you have in front of you. I am a minister. I minister to the largest mission field in the world. I minister to children. Tonight, I know that each of you are a minister because you minister to boys and girls. And you do that without accolades. You may once in a while get a thank you from a parent. You may once in a while just get that special hug from a child that just makes it really special for you. But week after week, you are preparing for different things for our boys and girls that makes them understand that Jesus loves them. And I would love to be able to send you all home with a special award. But tonight, we have chosen one person to represent each one of you. Somebody who has had a lifelong passion for children and children's ministries. And as in the process of the next few minutes, that person receives an award, I want you to think of it as an award to that person, but also to you because we just want you to know that you are valued, that you are doing something special for the kingdom because you minister to the least of these. I would like to read a biography of the person that we are honoring tonight. It was 1964 when Sandra Brewer and her husband Tess left Oklahoma to venture to an unknown place called Portland, Oregon. Sandra was deeply rooted in the Southern Baptist faith and she recognized the importance of going to church and serving God. Well, one day after arriving in Portland, a program offering a free Bible came to her home. She called the number for the offer, and some time later, a Bible worker came to her door. The older woman, Sister Holly, I believe, was very friendly and later became a friend and a mentor. She asked Sandra if she would like to learn more about the Bible, and Sandra gladly attended Bible studies. She learned about the Seventh-day Sabbath and other Bible truths, and with deep conviction, Mrs. Brewer joined the Seventh-day Adventist Church. She, with her two daughters, attended regularly, and I guess later two more. Responding to God's calling, Sandra served God wherever she was needed as deaconess, usher, kitchen aide, and then she found the Children's Sabbath School. She's been in children's ministry now. It's her joy and passion for 49 years. She's led out invocation Bible school programs, Christmas programs, Easter programs, 13 Sabbath programs, and lots more in her community. A lot of things because she loves the kids all around her. <clears throat> Not only has her life touched the church, children and the community children, but God has used her to mentor and inspire young people to follow in her footsteps and become passionate about teaching children. I met one of those at the Sharon Church, and that was exciting. And you know, Mrs. Brewer has been an inspiration to me personally, because for the last 10 years working in the Oregon Conference, Mrs. Brewer has come in frequently to get things for her Sabbath school class and always has something just great to share. 
always is an inspiration. This past summer, right in the middle of the Vacation Bible School program that Mrs. Brew and her daughter, Duana, were leading out in, they were taking a child home from the community that they had brought, and they were in a car accident, a pretty serious car accident. They weren't put in the hospital, they weren't seriously injured, but they were seriously hurting. And Mrs. Brewer was in a lot of pain, having trouble sleeping, having trouble getting around. Did that stop them from finishing the VBS? No. <laughs> they went right on and finished that VBS and came the next week to return their items. That's Mrs. Brewer. Sandra, for 49 years, you have provided a positive place at Sabbath School, in the church, in the community, where lives are transformed and children know they're loved and safe. And we would like you to come forward at this time to receive a little award for your many years of service. <clears throat> Elder John Friedman, our president of the North Pacific Union, desired to be here, was planning to be here, but except for a phone call from a hospice nurse, was unable to join us. So it is a deep privilege for me as vice president of education, a partner with you in bringing young people to the kingdom, to present from the Children's Leadership Conference to Sandra Brewer and a token of our appreciation for decades of service in sharing Jesus generations and she stands here as one who represents all of you and I know that's the way she would express it because she is consummately humble so on behalf of all of us gathered in the North Pacific Union we present this uh, memo this memento to remember all that you've done for God's children We thank her pastor for being with her um, this evening and their family. Um, it was a surprise. That's what we wanted. And who says women can't keep secrets? <laughs> so with us this weekend, we have had a number of people that have just come and blessed us by attending. And we are going to read together what is on the scroll that you received. But I am going to invite those people to come and join us to represent the leaders of children's ministries across the world, Linda Coe, I didn't warn you, but I'm asking you to come and join us here, please. Our General Conference Children's Ministries leader, I'm asking Sherry Urich to come and join us, our North American Division Children's Ministries leader. Is she here? I'm asking all of our conference Children's Ministries leaders to please come and join me. Come and stand up here with us, Linda. 
And I'm also asking our Florida conference leaders and our BC leaders to come and join us. We have been blessed this week to be supported by so many of our children's ministries leaders. Is Pastor Amandu here tonight? He left. Um, any other of our leaders? Well, Miko, where are you? How can I miss you? Okay, who, who else have I missed? Well, Miku's from our Alberta conference. Lada. <laughs> Abby, where is Abby? Oh, okay, good. The short and the tall together. Yes, let's curve around a little bit. All right, now I'm going to invite you. And I think this is a serious moment because what is written here comes straight from our hearts to yours. And I'm going to invite you to stand with us as we read this dedication about children's ministry. So stand with me and read. Let's all read together. You may have to curl it back a little bit because it's scroll. Ready? I am a minister. I minister to the largest mission field in the world. I minister to children. My calling is sure. My challenge is big. My vision is clear. My influence is strong. My influence is eternal. My impact is critical. My values are solid. My faith is tough. My mission is urgent. My purpose is unmistakable. My direction is forward. My heart is genuine. My strength is supernatural. My reward is promised and my God's real. In a world of cynicism, I offer hope. In a world of confusion, I offer truth. In a world of immorality, I offer values. In a world of neglect, I offer attention. In a world of abuse, I offer safety. In a world of ridicule, I offer affirmation. In a world of division, I offer reconciliation. In a world of bitterness, I offer forgiveness. In a world of sin, I offer salvation. In a world of hate, I offer God's love. I refuse to be dismayed, disengaged, disgruntled, discouraged, or distracted. Neither will I look back, stand back, fall back, go back, or sit back. I do not need applause, flattery, adulation, prestige, stature, or veneration. I do not have time for business as usual, mediocre standards, small thinking, outdated methods, normal expectations, average results, ordinary ideas, petty disputes, or low vision. I will not give up, give in, bail out, lie down, turn over, quit, or surrender. I will pray when things look bad. I will pray when things look good. I will move forward when others stand still. I will trust God when obstacles arise. I will work when the task is overwhelming. I will get up when I fall down. My call is to reach boys and girls for God. It is too serious to be taken lightly, too urgent to be postponed, too vital to be ignored, too relevant to be overlooked, too significant to be trivialized, 
too eternal to be fleeting and too passionate to be quenched. I know my mission. I know my challenge. I also know my limitations, my weaknesses, my fears, and my problems. And I know my God. Let others get praise. Let the church get the blessing. Let God get the glory. I am a minister. I minister to children. This is who I am. This is what I do. You may be seated. And thank you to all our conference people, our GC people, and our NAD people for being here. I would like to recognize those this evening that were faithful in going to a particular track and earned the award, the certification for that particular track. Um, this is a new set of certification that we got um, in the last year. And uh, Sherry Urig's department initiated. And I don't know if you've seen it work elsewhere, Sherry. Is this the first time somebody's completing a, or have other conferences already done tracks and given certificates? All right. So tonight, um, I would like to just honor those who did a certification track and completed it. So if there are any here who did that, I'm going to invite you to just stand where you are right now. Those who completed a certification track. There's one over there. Couple more. Excellent. Stay standing. I just want to hear from you who did the child evangelism track. Sonia did one couple more of you over there. Who did the partnering and the ministering to parents track? All right, wonderful. I am so thrilled that you were able to do that. We value you doing that because we know that you've gone through a really well-designed program in that area. So thank you, and I pray that the Lord will bless you as you go home with what you have learned. And for those of you that do early childhood education, you may keep that certificate because it may count for you towards further education and training um, from the schools that you work at. Thank you very much. If there are some of you that still need to get a certificate, you completed seven out of ten of the components. Uh, we've had Patty Marsh organizing that for us, our Upper Columbia Children's Ministries coordinator. So see her at the end if there's still somebody that missed out on getting their certificate. Um, in front of me, um, we have this beautiful box. I'm glad Pastor Roja is not here to see it on his amplifier. You don't tell him. Um, whatever this gadget is here, it's probably not even that. But has everybody put their names in this box? All right, I'm giving you two more minutes to... Write your names down and to bring them and put them in this box if you haven't already. Okay. 
Okay, as we uh, had mentioned, giving away some free things, we had a few cheers earlier in the evening. We, we love things that are free but of great value. And I, I also would encourage you, any ideas from little mixers, games, uh, always take, think about taking those back to apply to your Sabbath school programs and back at your local churches. So we are going to play a little game, or actually you will at your table, and it's a game to basically give things away for free, which means everybody is going to be a winner. And the game is called No Peeking, Just Feeling, and let me describe, okay, how come you gave me that look on your face, like, that game just sounds, it's a fun game. Um, <laughs> so here's how this game is going to work. Uh, if you could send up one representative from your table and grab one of these. Why are you all pointing at her? That's what happens. Christina, tonight's your night. So if you could send up one representative, we are going to give um, a bag to every table. And the game is very simple. The bag is to be passed around your table, and each table member has the opportunity to reach into the bag, grab a prize. Remember, no peeking, just feeling. And we're going to give everybody at your table a little prize for free. So come up, one representative from each table, and grab your bag, and then you can run that around the circle. We have security cameras. If we see you peeking... You will be leaving. Maybe, I'm just kidding. But yeah, so the, the idea would be whatever seems to connect the best as you reach your hand in the bag, that will be your prize for the evening from the no peeking, no peeking, just feeling. Yeah. So you can go ahead and do that right now. We don't have to wait, but once you have a bag... Just go ahead and run that around your table and give everyone a chance. You absolutely give everyone a chance to uh, have a prize. Okay. You need any help with this? I'm in the bit, so okay. now, now tell them to choose somebody whose birthday closest to the birth, or however you want it to be the start person, and then they're going to just keep passing it. Okay. And Sounds they, good. Put their hand in, take something out okay. until the whole bag is empty. And the goal would be for the bag to be completely empty. So if you've gone around once, go around again. These ladies only have two at their table. Merry Christmas. Uh, just keep passing that bag back and forth until everything in the bag is taken. And again, great chance to receive something free, small token of appreciation for all of our children's ministry leaders. And just keep sending that bag around until everything inside the bag has been given out. 